Welcome, I am Ernie Goss, McAllister Chair here at the Hyder College of Business at Creighton University in beautiful downtown Omaha, Nebraska. Here I am on the first business day of the month of April reporting on the business conditions for the nine state mid-American region for the month of March. Now the nine states of course span between North Dakota and Minnesota in the north right down the middle of the country to Oklahoma and Arkansas in the south. So how was it for the month of March? Well, it was a very, very strong number. The overall reading, although it did decline a bit, declined a bit, slips to 60.1 from 60.5 in February. Now, is that anything to be concerned about? No, not at all. I, I judge anything above 55 as in the strong category. I and of course, 50 is growth neutral, so that's obviously growth positive looking ahead. That looks good. We're, I'm expecting growth in the next six, three to six months. Now here I'm gonna bring up a chart that shows you and compares the U.S., and, and that's the U.S. in red, against the beautiful Creighton blue uh, there. And as you see, the, uh, the number for the U.S. has not come out. It'll come out later on this morning. Again, here we are on the first business day. The national number will come out uh, and in a, about an hour after we release our numbers. Now, the job index, that's always what everybody's concerned about. It was at a 62.6. That's the highest index that we've recorded since the beginning of the recovery. And as you may know, the recovery began in the summer of 2009. This is the strongest job number we've had since then, so that's obviously good. We ask about are you, what about hiring in the next six months? What are you going to, what's your business, what's your company going to do? 62, 63% said they were going to increase hiring. Now, how does that compare with when we asked the same question last June? Well, last June it was 24, about 25%. So more than double the percent indicated they were going to increase their hiring. That's June last year compared to here in March. So that's obviously good. Inflation gauge up 77.1, up from 75.0. That's the highest in six years. And that's a concern because, again, the Federal Reserve is looking for any signals of, of I won't say ramp up, but even rising inflationary pressures. This indicates it. So likely to see higher short-term interest rates, maybe even lo higher long-term interest rates. Those will probably lag behind the short-term. That means automobile loans. Anything less than five years, you're likely to begin paying, where well, you're already paying higher interest rates. You're going to be paying a bit more, probably as much as a half percent to three quarters of a percent by the end of the year. Uh, we ask about how much you're going to increase prices for your company's output, that is sales, about two and a half percent over the six months. Now double that, that's five percent. That again is pretty strong, so that's, those are, that's a little troubling, I would say. Now what to watch for? Uh, wage growth. Look for excessive wage growth. Now, you'd think that would be a good thing, and it normally is a good thing. From Bureau of Labor Statistics, that com number comes out April the 7th. If that number gets above 3.5%, year over year that is, that's a concern. Now, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing, and it signals higher inflationary pressures as workers spend more, and that increases inflationary pressures, increases prices. Keep an eye on the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, uh, for March, that comes out April the 14th. Last month, uh, they, it was 2.7% year over year. That's February to February. Now we're going to be looking at March to March when it comes out on April the 14th. If that number approaches 3%, you're going to see some economists in Washington, D.C. get weak knees. Their knees are going to be shaking because they're going to be afraid of inflation, which could mean a rate hike in as early as May. That'd be, that's our next meeting from the Open Market Committee. Also, what's the European elections? Now, what the heck does that have to do with us here in the middle of the country? A lot. What happens, of course, is when you get global surprises, global events that are unexpected, particularly, that has a big impact that spills back over into this part of the country, which exports a lot of goods, whether it's processed food, whether it's uh, agricultural products, it's very important. Now what, uh, what are the risk factors going forward? Well, I think headline inflation above 3%. Now the headline inflation is the number that includes uh, both food and energy. Now the, when you extract food and energy, that's called the core. I'll call the other number the headline number. Above 3% concern. Look at uh, Marine Le Pen 
winning the elections. Now that's the first round of elections in France. April the 23rd, Marine Le Pen, she's, a, she's Donald Trump in a skirt. That's, uh, let me just put it that way. And it will be much the same. Not saying good or bad, I'm just saying it'll be a very big surprise and that will shock the world at least as, I'm, as we're doing this video today. It will shock the world, and that means global risks begin rising, and that has big implications of global trade, but also long-term interest rates as investors seek safe havens. One of those safe havens is U.S. Treasuries. They would be buy, that would increase the value of the dollar, and it would t intend to push down long-term interest rates Another risk factor, no corporate tax cut. That's a big, big factor. Uh, we're all, those, uh, that Dow Jones Industrial Average, 30 stocks. The S&P, of course, 500 stocks. NASDAQ, 100 stocks. All those have been b moving up, crawling up, flying up, going up, all that. That, that would be, we could see some downturns there because those uh, embedded in there, baked in there, is a corporate tax cut. So if we if all if that just goes off the table and that includes repatriation of earnings abroad, that's about two point three trillion dollars that could be brought home and taxed at a lower rate, that would go off the table as well. So that's a big risk factor. Watch out for that. Well that's it. Now this our what is let me summarize it all. Good numbers looking ahead for this part of the country, and I think when the national number comes out later on this morning, also good. We're adding jobs, adding economic activity, inflation's going up, still not really too much of a concern, but it is increasing. Interest rates will be going up as well. So those that's what our survey says for the month of March. Here I am on the first business day of April. Until we, I see you again on the first business day uh, of, uh, let me see, that would be May, okay. Until we see you on the first business day of May, may your economic cup runneth over.